Ah, well, I'll tell you that when I first wanted to become an artist, I was in my undergrad program in the 1970s and took, a, I was a music major and an art minor and took a choir tour trip of Europe, but we also got credits in art, art history. I graduated from school, got married, worked in a bank, you know, not, not much to do, but always in the back of my brain, someday maybe I'll be able to do art. And then, out of necessity, had to get a really good job, went back for my master's in computer science because I was going to be a single mom going through a divorce and raising, you know, my little girl. And in computer science is where the money was at that time. And that's also how I met my husband because he's in computer science. So that's how that's, I guess the long story made it as short as possible, but the dream was always to do something in art. But once I settled into getting the, the machine, it took me about two or three days to get the machine to work. I call the machine, by the way, Chaucer, because it tells a tale, like Chaucer's tales, tale of the going and the coming. And once I got the machine working and the art started coming out, then I started relaxing into feeling, oh, this is really special. There's nowhere in the earth that I would have the, this particular wind or be able to walk down to that river or be able to dance down that road um, and I would pick my colors based on what I would see out in the environment so that my palette was either matching something you know the weather or it was matching the rock or it was matching the growth of new green things and now I just want to stay here for another three weeks. <laughs> well I'm an oil painter but I also draw and I don't prefer one over the other it's just sort of like there, there are certain times when I'm painting oil paintings and certain times when I'm drawing. But I don't particularly draw a lot that is realistic where you can recognize something. I'll do a landscape sketch or a building sketch or a sketch of my husband's feet when I'm in the mood. But I really like to think of, think hard about what energies are like. So it came to me one day when I was looking at all the telephone wires and cables and stuff over the roads as I was driving. And I thought, there's an awful lot of energy waves that are hitting us that we don't even hear. And I've got this musical background, so it started percolating farther and farther in my brain. How can I utilize that to create art? So I started researching just what different forms of energies kind of look like, you know, looking at seismographs from earthquakes or looking at pictures of volcano eruptions or... Um, like one of the things I'm still learning now is how to look at music in a fast Fourier transform program so that you can sort of see the peaks and the valleys over time and stuff. And those are the things then that drive me to create the art, but to actually make the energy look like it's something in the art, I use charts and maps and music and textures, textures kind of being a record maybe of a geological shift or um, maps being a record of travel over time, so there's energy beaten into the path, or uh, even the way a tree grows is a texture. And I layer those one over another over another, so that, especially in my paintings, there are lots of layers. In these drawings, there's only usually two or three layers. But, but that mimics to me what's happening to us back when I thought about all these things that are hitting us, the gamma rays from the sun, and the radio waves, and the TV waves, and the cell phone waves. So that's what I use to create the art.